Good evening. Welcome to this service of From Light to Dark, Monday, Thursday. Welcome to those who are here and to those who will join us on YouTube. We're always glad to know there's a congregation out on YouTube with us. During this service, we will hear the story of the night when Jesus was betrayed after eating Passover with his disciples. I hope you received or picked up a black ribbon. If not, there's some more by the window out there, by the door. Um, when it represents our sin, the darkness of our sin. And as you sit during the service of the next few minutes, be thinking about that, because when we come up for communion, our form of confession today will be to bring our ribbon and put it on the cross up here and uh, decorate it with our sin. For that is why Jesus went to the cross, was to carry our sin for us there. Um, as the service proceeds, the lights are going to get a little dimmer. Um, the candles will be extinguished, but it won't go completely dark. We'll leave some lights on um, so we can keep singing the hymns. And then as we get to the end, there will be no benediction. We will carry out the banner and the Christ candle out, and we'll all go out in quietness as we, we get ready for Good Friday. Um, this John 12. 20 through 36. But I will be reading John 12, 31 through 36. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Jesus said to them, the light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. After Jesus had th said this, he departed and hid from them. I'll be reading John Chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas' son, of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew was who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one's another feet. This reading is from John 13. 21 through 30. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. 
And after he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him to buy what we need for the festival or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. Because we have been, our, we've had our moments when we turned away, when we have deserted Jesus. And that's why he had to die on the cross. Let's pray. Loving and wonderful God, you loved your son mightily. He was your beloved son. Oh Lord God, we are blessed tonight because you love this world that you made and you love us. And so you sent him to us to offer us your life and your hope that through the cross he carried, we would have life abundant, even this life we share today around this table together as your body. Lord, tonight we bless you for this bread and this cup that we receive, the body and blood of your son, Jesus. Bless you for this hall of this creation, Lord, the beautiful sunshine we experience today and, and the promises of the flowers that are coming up that spring is almost here. Lord, we bless you for that. We bless you for the church. We bless you for your son, our Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this table that is set before us. For it is through it that we remember and more than remembering, we experience your presence. For our eyes are open and we see your face as we come to sup with you. May your love fill us up tonight so that we might fulfill your commandment to us, that we would love one another just as you have loved us, so we should love one and the other. In and through your name, Jesus, we pray as we pray together the prayer that you taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day as daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On that night when Jesus was betrayed, he picked up the bread, and he had blessed the Lord, and then he broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And then he picked up the cup from the table and said, this is a cup in the new, of a new covenant in my blood. And each time you drink this, you tell forth my death until I come again. You are welcome all to come as you feel led. Put your ribbon up and then come. Take and then go back to your seats.
for this bread and this cup, Lord Jesus. We are blessed. For you give us your own silk this night, just as you did many years ago. Thank you, Lord, that as you feed us, we grow more like you. And in growing more like you, we grow our love for others. This is our prayer. Amen. I will be reading from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. Then Jesus went out with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved and even to death. Remain here, stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me just one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will not at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me? as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. We will uh, sing the hymn 220, Go to Dark Gethsemane, verses 1 through 3.
will be reading from John 18, and I'm reading verses 12 through 27. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Cephas, the high priest that year. Cephas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus to the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside of the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna said to bound, said him to bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it. At that moment the cock crowed. Our song is 221, O Sacred Head Now Wounded.
going to continue our scripture reading from John 18, 28 through 19, verse 16. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief's priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You may say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but if you have a custom that I release someone for you at Passover, do you want me to release him for you, the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it has been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of the preparation for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. we strew his way and his sweet praises sing resounding all the day hosannas to our king 
then crucify is all our breath. And for his death, we thirst and cry. Our next reading is from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you, our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who seek me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of nation surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and my feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to the people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. We Matthew 27, 50 through 66. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. 
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body, and he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, the, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, remember what the impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Let us sing number 215, What Wondrous Love Is This?
Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus. What wondrous love you have for us that you should call us friends when we put you on a cross, when we have turned away, when we have forgotten that we are loved for eternity, have been loved from before we ever lived. Oh, Lord Jesus, you indeed suffered greatly. You indeed felt the sting and the, the pain and the humiliation. You indeed bore our sin more than a black ribbon, our deep down sin, Lord, the part we don't want to share with anyone else you took so that we would be free, so we could live triumphantly, so we could know the joy of your presence in us. Lord, this night we thank you for the food yourself that you give us. We thank you for to be gathered around your cross to remember, to never forget the cost of the life we share in you. And Lord, as we quietly make our way after this last song, that we would hear you speak your words of love and grace, that we never have to know the hell you endured because you, you went there so we wouldn't have to. Loving Savior, we bless your holy name. Amen. Our final song. <laughs>